this is Sister Too Funky from the Museum of Uncut Funk. I'm here today to introduce the new blog to our site called Cafe 70. One of the things that this blog will feature are some of the places that I like to visit, some of my favorite things that I like to buy to eat, and some of my favorite places that I like to shop for food. Today I'm going to show and share with you how I prepare barbecued ribs for Memorial Day weekend. Okay, so I've just come back from my favorite butcher, John, here in New Jersey, and I brought a slab of barbecue ribs that I'm going to prepare. So, I'm going to move this over, and I have these beautiful barbecue ribs. I love shopping at the butcher because my butcher likes to explain to me where he gets his meat from, how his animals are treated, and so on and so forth. And you kind of don't get that when you go to the supermarket. So one of the first things I'm going to do, I want to show you this beautiful slab of ribs. Absolutely gorgeous. Just enough fat on there to keep the ribs moist. I like to turn mine over. And this back part here, it's a little difficult to get off, so I like to score it with my knife and kind of dig in there and get this layer of skin. Now some people will keep this on because they say it keeps the ribs moist in the cooking process. I've tried it once. To me, it was kind of rubbery. It made it, a, a, you know, too much to chew and, you know, to each his own. I prefer to take it off. So this does take a bit of elbow grease to get it off because, of course, the ribs are a little wet. But here we go, you don't have a lot to tear off. And you know, when you're making your ribs, you decide what works best for you. Some people might like this on, and again, a lot of people smoke their ribs. I will be smoking mine. I will be using a combination of mesquite, cherry, and hickory. You know, why use one when you can make have a combination of all flavors? So once you get all of that off, Let's make sure we got it up in the corners here. Once you get all that off, you can start to trim away some of the fat. Now, it's not really good to trim all of the fat off of your ribs because you do want your ribs moist. And if you take all the fat off, what's the sense in eating barbecue ribs? In any event, I'm going to try to get this last piece of skin off this last rib here. Sometimes you can scrape it, and if you scrape it, it'll come right off and it will enable you to pull it. There we go. So once you get all of that off, you're going to trim some of the fat away. Again, leave some fat on to give it some flavor. But try to get as much off as you can or to your liking. And then I personally don't like to take the fat off on this side because if you are smoking your ribs, the fat tends to melt away. And this way it, it, it runs back into the meat and it keeps your meat moist. So I'll take a little off here because it looks like there's a good amount of fat here. And now I'm going to wash my hands because after handling meat, any kind of meat, especially chicken for that matter, you always want to wash your hands and uh, make sure they're thoroughly clean. And I got a paper towel here. Now I'm going to move these ribs to this pan and then I'm going to share with you my rub. So once I do that, let me just get this out of the way, throw this away. Now I have readily available my Clorox wipe so I can wipe down my counter because as you can see, a lot of the juices from the raw meat has washed up on the counter. Let me just get a towel real quick and make sure it's thoroughly clean because this is how bacteria can build up in your kitchen, get into your food, and 
We certainly don't want to have that problem. Okay, fabulous. Now that your counter is all white, here are my ribs, beautifully laid out for you. And what I'm going to share with you are spices that I like to use when putting a dry rub on my rib. So I don't know if the camera can pan in and show you, but what I have here is a salt-free garlic and parsley powder. I have a little barbecue seasoning, which is a mixture of different herbs and spices. I have some cinnamon. I have smoked paprika in the middle. And I like a little heat to my ribs, but not a lot, because some of my guests uh, don't prefer heat in their food, but have a little jerk seasoning. And um, here, I'd have a little Bayou uh, seasoning from New Orleans. So I'm going to mix this up, as you can see. Make sure everything is mixed up nicely. And then, once I get that all mixed, and you really don't need a lot, because remember, you're going to be adding barbecue sauce to this. But the purpose of me adding this dry rub is that I put it on my ribs, and I let it sit for 24 hours so it can really marinate the meat. Okay. Here, I have brown sugar. Now, it's a little moist and it's a little clumpy. I'm going to uh, mix this in to my dry rub mix. I'm going to mix this up. Now, you know, depending on your taste, you can add more or less spices. I personally don't like to add any salt because, you know, I try to cook without salt as much as possible. And, you know, depending on the seasonings that you use, a lot of them have salt in it, a lot of them have hidden salt. So there's really no need to add any additional salt from my standpoint. But, you know, if your palate requires salt, by all means, add it. So once you get this mixture added, or rather mixed, make sure it's in there really good. Now, you know what, if your, your sugar has some lumps in it, like you find that this sugar has lumps in it, it's okay because once you put it on the meat and let it marinate, it's going to dissolve. So you really don't have to spend a lot of time trying to get the little bowls all mashed out. I like to turn my meat on the back side first, and I like to add my dry rub there. I move this flap of meat over and just put it on generously, you know, make sure it's all over. You can pat it in as you're going. You can put as much or as less as you like to. I like to make sure mine is all in there and it's nicely covered. Because remember the back of the ribs need to be equally as seasoned as the front of your ribs. So once you've got that all taken care of, even though there's uh, mostly bone at the back of the rib, you still want the bone to have the flavor because in my family, we like to suck on the bones. I know, some people don't like to admit that, but it's okay. So you take the rest of your seasoning and you rub it on. Make sure it covers every part of your rib. And once you get that in, yeah, you can hear the sugar falling to the bottom of the, the pan. Just pick it up and mash it in there because, again, like I said, it will dissolve. And you'll have a nice stream of juice at the bottom of your pan. So once you get that all covered, like this, Make sure every square inch is covered. You're going to put this in the refrigerator. I usually let mine marinate for 24 hours. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'll put my dry rub on, put it in the freezer, let it sit in the refrigerator first, then put it in the freezer and take it out 48 hours later, and it's just as good, just as flavorful, and just as moist. And okay, we get some aluminum foil. Now, you know, one sheet can cover this. Some people will do that. I prefer two sheets because I want to make sure that no air gets in to my ribs. 
So I will take two sheets. Be very generous with the foil. I know it's expensive, but better to be safe than sorry. Cover that up. And put it in the fridge. I hope you enjoyed this, the first segment of Cooking with Sister Too Funky at Cafe 7L. I look forward to sharing more recipes with you, and I hope you uh, come to the Museum of Uncut Funk and see our new blog, Cafe 7L. Thank you. Yeah.